Chris Brown, Chris Trapasso with you. And look who we got on his regular di- <laughs> during the season. Uh, senior producer from NFL Films, Greg Cosell, who is uh, here and ready to watch quarterbacks throw in about an hour, but took some time to join us. Good to see you, Greg, as always. And uh, we know you've been dicing up the receivers, I mean, so we I mean, figure you know, we're trying to get there. You yeah, know, I so. feel like the Super Bowl just happened yesterday, so I'm a little behind. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we I all mean, feel yeah, yeah, we yeah, all yeah, feel yeah, behind. Yeah, right, right. There's no time <laughs> to hit the pause button. It seems <laughs> right, right. ever. Um, yeah. But let's jump right into the receiver class. Sure. There are a lot of Bills fans that are interested in the class as a whole. Um, it's a good one, Chris. There seems to, yeah, I know, yeah. there, and and with true X receivers, which is what the Bills are perceived to need knowing that Gabe Davis is probably out the door signing a free agent deal elsewhere. So with that in mind, we're going to start with a guy who looks like a true X in every sense of the word in Brian Thomas. And there's, and I know you don't really care about debating where he might go. Right, right, right. Um, <laughs> but there's some debate he could be gone as early as 15, or he may leak down to where the Bills pick. But what is maybe the most appealing trait about a guy who seems to have a pretty complete skill set? Which is his most appealing trait for Brian Thomas? Well, let's talk from the Bills' perspective. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Overall length, stride length, vertical dimension. They don't have any of that. No. Mm -hmm. And I think that, to me, when I watched his tape, I came away feeling like he was an ascending player. You know, that he would continue to get better. That what we've seen of him at LSU was not going to be what he is. That he hasn't stopped right there. Okay. That he's going to get better. Um I know that he works with T.J. Hushmanzada, and I've heard he's a phenomenal kid. Um, and I think he's going to get better and better. Um, he's long, uh, which is a trait, by the way. You know, uh, I had to learn that, you know, Chris, years ago when I started really doing college players' evaluations in, in earnest. It goes back, I can't remember how many years, a while ago. But, I, you know, I'd see tall guys with stride length, and I never really took that into account. And then I kind of realized, wait a second, that's a trait. Because when they get free access, they eat up ground in a hurry. Yeah, they get up on yeah, that corner's up, toes yeah, yeah. and force him into an uncomfortable decision. Exactly. So I really like uh, Brian Thomas a lot, and I think you're right. He's more than just a vertical dimension. You know, I think that there's a lot to him. I think he can work the middle of the field. Um, so, yeah, I, I who knows where he gets drafted, but this is a deep receiver class. It's deep in other areas, too, so you don't know how the draft's going to yeah. play out. So let me follow up on that real quick because there is some talk that, well, you know, the LSU receivers just won all day on slants and fades and didn't really show you too much more of their route tree on a consistent basis. Um, I don't know how legitimate you would consider that argument because I guess it, it left people wanting to see more of a route tree from Brian Thomas. Do you feel you saw enough of it? Uh, certainly his skill set would indicate he's capable of it, but what do, what do you say to that? Would, give me a little devil's advocate to you that know, if you could. You know, uh, Brownie, I've never been a big, big believer in that part of it um, because I think ultimately the routes you mentioned, they run a lot in the NFL, by the way. Yeah. You know, I think of teams, even good teams, like I think of someone who's big like T. Higgins and Thomas who, you know, not that it's an apples-to-apples apples comparison, but, yeah. you know, T. Higgins runs a lot of his glance routes and slant routes mm-hmm. and a lot of vertical routes. These are routes that are run quite frequently in the, in yeah. the NFL. Um, so, you know, He's going to be taught things anyway when he gets to the next level. You know, he's, he, obviously he'll run a few more routes, but no receiver runs every route in the book. Yeah. You know, it doesn't really work that way. Right. So I've never really seen that as, as an argument that, that should limit what, how you view a receiver. Shouldn't be a knock. It shouldn't be a knock, correct. Okay. On that note, athletically on film, do you think Thomas – even if he's not running a ton of routes now and you're going to show him other routes, or maybe he'll never have to, do you think he has the athleticism and the flexibility being even a bigger receiver to get open on a as much of a consistent basis as he will need to in the NFL? Yeah, I do. I mean, okay. it might not happen day one in training camp yeah. or, or the first Sunday of the season, but, yes, I think that he's got – the body type, because he's he's not thin, thin, but he certainly is not a he's heavy not guy. He's not 230. Right, right, right. Um, normally those heavier guys, and we'll get to one of those guys, I'm sure, shortly, but I think he's got the, the body type, the flexibility, the movement skills where he's able to do that. And plus, so much of route running, Chris, that you're talking about, a lot of that is detail and nuance, how you use your vertical stem, can you get a corner off a spot, can you get his body turned. Those are more nuanced elements of route running, which you can be taught. Okay. All right, so let's move on to a guy whose basketball background is very apparent when you watch him play football. Keon Coleman 
you know, who comes from Michigan State, actually played for Tom Izzo yep. for the Michigan State Spartans. And it's no surprise the guy wins just about every jump ball he's a part of. Uh, and here we go again with a little bit of a knock. They say, well, uh, not a consistent separator, but no. it doesn't seem like he needs to if he's winning it. <laughs> Every jump ball and contested catch, seemingly. Uh, but do you, could, could you see that as a little bit of a concern for some teams, uh, along with just the one year of major production? Yeah, I kept going back and forth on, on Coleman. Um, there were times I really liked him, and there were other times I just was uncertain. Um, I feel like there's a lot in his body, Brownie. Like, in other words, there's, there's much to cultivate. Okay. I don't know... Uh, if he's ready right away, I mean, he made a couple of great catches. You know, we we know he can do that. He's probably gonna he'll come in at over six three. He's listed at six four. Sometimes we know that that's not exactly right. right. right, right. But he's gonna come in at probably in the six three range. Um, he did make one catch that was ridiculous this year, and there's no question he can make contested catches, which of course plays to the boundary X element that you were speaking yeah. about. You know, that single receiver to the short side of the field that has to be able to make contested catches. Um, I think he can do that. Um, I think uh, as far as the, the, the nuance of the position, he needs a lot of work. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't like him overall as much as others, but I saw that there was something there. And I, it just I think it needs work. Might take a little longer for it all to click. Yes, yes. All right, moving across the country to Oregon, Troy Franklin. Yeah. It's obvious he's a burner. He's, he's going to be 6'3", 180. He should be a burner at that size. To me, beyond the uh, added element of explosive plays down the field, I think the Bills offense needs to plan ahead for 2025. post Stephon Diggs era, most likely, um, just thinking long term. Do you think, this is kind of general, do you think from what you saw in tr uh, with Troy Franklin on film that he can be more than a vertical separator and be that relatively nuanced route runner who can you know, garner 150 targets and be a number one eventually in the NFL? I would, I would answer that more in the affirmative than the negative. Um, I like Troy Franklin. There's no question, Chris, he's a vertical guy. No question. He can run. Um, I think he tracks the ball really well. But he also ran in that offense because it was a very defined, structured offense with Bo Nix. He ran a lot of shorter routes. He ran a lot of in-breakers. Mm -hmm. He worked the middle of the field pretty effectively. He yep. lined up in the slot, too. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, so I think that he can d do more than just be a vertical dimension. He's a receiver I really like because of his speed. Um, where did the Bills draft, Brown? 28. 28. You know, it's so hard to know, and I'm not, you know, I'll be the first to admit I'm not good at that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah. But he could well be there depending on how the draft plays out. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm just such a firm believer that with Josh Allen, the Bills need speed. They don't have any speed. They haven't receiver. had it since John Brown. Right. Um, what, what do you say to the critics of his stature? We have examples in the league of slight frame guys that have, I guess, for the most part, been able to stay at Devonta Smith, which, you know, who's right under your nose where right, you right. are. Like, I don't know how many games he's missed in his short Hardly career. Any. Hardly right. Any. But then you have like a tank Dell who was tearing up the league and then breaks his leg. I don't uh, know what fluke, level of fluke. Yeah, right. Yeah. What level of concern do you think there is for slighter framed receivers especially now that we're playing 17 regular season games and should that be a factor in the equation at all brownie less than there ever has been you think of a lot of these receivers drafted high go back to addison a year ago from sc my size 170 <laughs> yeah, 172 pounds i think the way the game has changed now with the motion with these receivers with getting the free access into their routes with more location uh diversity within the formation for receivers I, I think that that sort of knock uh, you know if, if you want to present it as such against smaller receivers is kind of falling away mm -hmm. a little bit mm -hmm. okay you know, I think that that's you, why I asked yeah you can get these guys in motion you can get them off the ball you know you can create yeah, they're lining receivers up in the backfield now right you can <laughs> get them anywhere to give them free access off the ball so you know I don't think with Franklin you know obviously and, and who knows what you can get him up to in the at the NFL level. You'll never get him up to 205, I'm sure. But maybe you get him up to 188, in which case that's fine. Then, yeah. then he's not really too, too, too light. So, but I don't think that's a big that, – let's put it this way. If he's, if he's not to make it, I don't think that would be the reason. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Yeah. Another receiver uh, that, to me, I like. Uh, he's a little enigmatic for me. It's kind of hard to really peg him. Texas is A.D. Mitchell. Ah. Talk about what you really like about him, and he feels like – or 
at least to me, he feels like someone that has his best football in front of him because we didn't really see him play a lot of football. No, he's a Georgia transfer, Mm -hmm. so he had the big year this year in Texas. I I loved A.D. Mitchell. Now, I loved him, for instance, far more than Coleman, and they're similar in size. I think Mitchell's more explosive. Um, I think he's more sudden for his size. Um, I really like Mitchell's tape a lot. I came away from watching Mitchell feeling that, and again, I don't know the kid, so, you know, and again, and now it depends where he goes to. You know, we all know there's a lot of factors involved. But I came away feeling like this guy could be a top ten receiver in the league within three years. Mm. I mean, I think this okay. guy has really high-level traits. Um, you know, a lot of people point to the Alabama game when he made some catches against Kool-Aid McKinstry, particularly one in the in the low red zone where he just really ran a great route and beat him. I don't know if you remember that play. Yeah, I do. You know. Um, but impressive I, at his size doing that. What's that? Like impressive oh, at his size I mean, doing yeah, that. Oh, I mean, yeah. I really like A.D. Mitchell a lot. He, uh, I was telling Chris this when we were off the air. To me, he kind of stands out as a clutch performer. It seems like the bigger the game, the better he is, whether it's Texas's upset of Alabama this year. He scores two touchdowns in that game. Yep. And he's played in five college football playoff games in his career. He has a touchdown in every yeah. one of them. I mean, to me... That's the clutch gene. You can't always describe what it is, right, but right. you know it when you see it, and yeah. it seems like he has that. Yeah, and he's just really gifted. I mean, I, I, he, I didn't know a ton about him. I mean, I, obviously, he played at Georgia. You know, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. not as if I never saw him. Right, right. But right. I, I didn't know a lot about him. Yeah, you know? and he missed a lot of time his last year at, at Georgia because of the high ankles. Correct. So that was the thing. He missed a lot of time. So, uh, you know, when I, when I really put on the tape, uh, probably – two, three weeks ago, can't remember exactly when, I was kind of blown away. Mm-hmm. I, I, he, he became, you know, again, I don't usually make lists, and, and receivers are different. Like, you know, I wouldn't compare him to, like, to me, it's not a comparison to say, well, who do you like better, Mitchell or Ladd McConkey? To me, they're not comparable. They're totally, totally different, different guys. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, on a certain level, if I really had to make a list, he might be my fourth receiver. If I really, if somebody said to me, you better Mitchell. make a list or else. Yeah, Mitchell, Mitchell would be yeah. fourth, okay. Yeah. Do wow. you think he's... Because he hasn't really played a lot, just the one year of high-level production. Do you think he can hit the ground running, so to speak, and be that fifty to sixty to seventy catch guy in year one, or is it more you draft him and you're saying, like you said, in three years you're getting a top ten receiver? That would depend to me on two things, maybe not only two things, but two things for sure: the kind of kid he is and the wide receiver coach. Okay. Those two things would dictate, yep. you know, and again, like I said, there's probably other factors. You know, none of us know the kid, yeah, no. you know, so you don't know the answer to that. But, you know, if he's really susceptible to coaching, how he handles it, work ethic, all those things that go into the fact that the NFL game is not the college game and how he's coached. You know, I mean, you know, now you got to you got to coach these kids. The, the, the NFL is a different game. You can't just say, hey, man, you're you're six, three, you're smooth, you're great. You know what? You got to go out and separate. You got to coach these <laughs> yeah, kids, yeah. you know. Right. And he's supposed to test off off the charts. He could very well do that. Yeah, that's going to be crazy. Uh, does it, did you have a follow up? Yeah, quick follow up. Playing devil's advocate because I do like him, but I said it's a little mystery for me. What about yards after the catch? Do you think he wasn't used in a role that, you know, got him the ball in space? Because I saw on film someone that wasn't a big yards after the catch guy, and we know how important that is. Do you think that's in a different role he can be a good yards after the catch guy like a Brian Thomas is at a similar size? I do. Okay. Okay. And yards after catch is, to me, more often a function of the quarterback, and I think Mm. Quinn Ewers was – a little erratic with his ball location yep. at times. Okay. Um, so, whereas Jaden Daniels was not. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you know, I think I think that's in his body clearly. Okay. All right. Talking about yards after catch, how about Xavier Leggett from South Carolina? This guy, for a man that is 225 pounds, six foot one, you're not expecting him after the catch to pull away from DBs who look like track athletes, and yet he, <laughs> right, and right. Yet he does it on film. Yeah, right. He looks like he's too thickly built to be capable of doing that, and yet there he goes, and right. you can't get him. So now, Brownie, you have to think about guys who've looked like him coming into the league. And again, that's what teams do. They play oh, the for percentages. Sure. For sure. Yeah, you know, they, they look at a guy that's 6'1", I believe he was 223 at the senior ball. Yeah. So like you said, 225-ish, give or take. How many guys like that, and again, he may be the exception, but how many guys like that it's, have really become big basically time? Debo Samuel? That's it. That's the only Brown guy I can too. think of. Oh, uh, AJ's, big, AJ's bigger, though. Yeah. He's taller, he's isn't bigger. he? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think so, actually. AJ Brown? 
Yeah, isn't he like six? Is he? No, he's more, about the same size. The same so height? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so A.J. Brown, so Debo Samuel? The other guy. And D.J. Moore is in and there. And then the, then the guy you have to be careful about who, who – a lot of people liked, including myself mm. when he came out, who didn't make it as LaVisca Chenault. Yeah. Very, mm. si- very similar build. Now, again, I'm not saying he can't be a really good player. Okay. But he's, he's a big, thick kid who's fast with the ball in his hands, not necessarily as fast as a route runner. And those are two different things. Okay. Point. Um, so, yes, is there like a Debo Samuel element to him with the ball in his hands? Perhaps. Um, but I... I I think you'd have to do a lot of due diligence on him to try to figure out exactly how you deploy him in the context of your offense. So he might be a little bit more raw. Right. And lacks route savvy. Yes. So that's, again, now you're counting on, to your point on the last guy, your receiver's coach to kind of get more out of him and refine him so he can maximize every skill he has. Right. I mean, right now he's the kind of guy you'd probably throw tunnel screens to. You'd use him on jet sweeps. And all that's great. But he still has to be a receiver. Sure. He still has to be a receiver. Okay. That's interesting. I hadn't thought about that. I think that's especially interesting because we heard Sean McDermott and Brandon Bean earlier this week talk about Explosive plays, and they both specifically mentioned, which I'm a big advocate of, run after the catch. So to me, with Leggett, if the Bills did pick him, it would have to be like, all right, we know that you're not going to run all the routes, uh, but let's just use you in that jet sweep, well, tunnel screen type you role know, early on. And I think one reason they mentioned run after catch is think about what their, their offense looked like when Joe Brady took over. Now, there'll be some changes because Joe Brady now can work all season. He's not beholden to uh-huh. what was done prior. He can put in a lot more of what he wants to put in. But at the end of the day, they ended up throwing a lot of shorter balls. Uh-huh. And when you start throwing shorter balls, you're relying on run after catch to be a bigger part of your offense. Sure. So I'm sure they see run after catch as something that is, is now important to them. All right, so Ricky Pearsall is another guy you did, right? I, I do like Ricky Pearson. So, there, but he's a guy that may not test off the charts. Um, I think he's going to test pretty well. So but do I. I don't know if he's going to – he's not running 4-3, though. No, um, no, no. But not that that's the end-all, be-all to being a good receiver in the league, as you well know. But maybe just what appeals to you um, about him. He was, a, he was a transfer, too, right, Chris? Yeah, like, I think Arizona. Arizona. Yeah, so he leads yeah. Arizona in receiving, then goes to Florida and leads Florida in receiving. Right. Like, wherever yeah. he went, he was productive. And he made that prim- arguably the best catch of the year, that one-handed yeah. catch. You remember that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, he caught it like it was a tennis ball. Oh, yeah. It was ridiculous. Yeah, it was Yeah, it yeah. was not right. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. Um, and you know what? He's 6'1". I mean, he was at the senior ball. I think when people look at him, they probably automatically say, oh, slot. But he's 6'1", mm-hmm. and he runs well. And I think you could line him up. I think he's location versatile within, the, within your formation. I think he runs good routes. It would not surprise me if he runs better than you think. I mean, he's not, like you said, he's not going to run a 4-3-5. But he's also not one of those, like, typical slot receivers that's going to run a 4-5-9 right. or a 4-6-1. I like Ricky Pierce, and I think he's tough. I, I watched him play. And I don't know if it's because the, the first name is the same, but I was thinking I'm thinking Ricky Prohl Ricky was Prohl. coming to mind. Ooh, good one. He was good coming to Paul. mind when I was watching him on tape. Do, do you think that translates at all? Ricky Prohl. For a comp? I, I know Ricky Prohl very well, and uh, and uh, Ricky Prohl was a great. Re- you know, do you know that Ricky Prohl? Just as an, a ridiculous aside, for the first ten years in his career, he played with ten different quarterbacks. Oh my gosh! Wow. That's insane. And, and the only Pro- reason he couldn't get on the field is because he's playing with the greatest show on turf with a couple of Hall of Famers. But if you look at his numbers in his career, they were really good. Yeah. I mean, he's he's interesting comparison. I mean, Ricky Pro was a really, really good receiver. But he, he was a guy that was not gigantic but could line up outside anywhere, as well. Anywhere, like what yeah. you were saying yeah. about Pearsall. I, you know, it made me even think about Ricky Pro all the more because I was watching his tape and I'm thinking of Ricky Pro. And then you said, you know, he's six one and people say slot, but he can line up outside. I'm like, oh my God, it's Ricky Pro again! Like <laughs> you made me start thinking I of mean, Ricky Pro all over again. I don't know if this comparison. I, I'd be curious, Chris, if you, you know, what you think of this comparison? You know, some might look at him and think of someone like Adam Thielen. Yeah. Oh I think wow, that makes a lot of sense. I think people would be very yeah, happy. Yeah. If yeah. <laughs> you talk about this a lot, Greg. I think with Pearsall, beyond just running routes. Uh, I think he does a great job immediately 
diagnosing? Is it man? Is it zone? Yeah, and yeah. where I need to be? Yep, because a yep. lot of route running is not just how athletic you are. Can you shake the press man corner? There's a lot of zone that's played in the NFL. It's about two-thirds zone. I think he has a very good uh, sense, like football IQ of doing yeah, that. Yeah, that's a great point, Chris, because I think most people think that only the quarterback has to make that determination yeah, no, good call. as yeah. to whether it's man or zone, and receivers do too. I remember when Sterling Sharp used to come to NFL Films every week, and I got to know him really well, and we talk receiving, you know, because he was great. Yeah, in ridiculous. fact, there were some who think that if he didn't get hurt, yeah. that he would have been the best receiver ever, better than Rice, but that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> but anyway, he used to talk about the fact that when you're playing against zone, sometimes you have to change the depth of routes. You, you have to do different things other than how the route is written in the playbook mm -hmm. because you have to find open space yep. within the timing of the, the, you know, the whole play. And, you know, that's a great point. That, that's something that's overlooked, I think, with a lot of receivers. Yeah, and it's a great class. I mean, just the class as a whole – I mean, we're looking into the third round oh, probably for, sure. for starting caliber talent, you know, that could get on the field in year one and contribute. Not somebody rolling in, you know, to mop, for mop-up duty in a 20-point victory. You're talking about guys that are going to play roles well into day two, right? It is that deep, you would yeah, say, I just mean, on the caliber I think, of and player. I think because the talent level is pretty high at receiver now, just in, you know, in every general, year, every year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then I think it comes down to team scheme, how they're deployed. I mean, just think of Puka Nakua. You know, I mean, I think you, you get into all that. Yeah. You, know, you get into Round how five. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that whoever they draft is going to catch 104 balls. Or <laughs> right. <laughs> but look at Khalil Shakir this year for the Bills. Like that's a fifth round pick. A player, if you recall, when they you drafted liked him, I him. said I really liked yeah. him out of Boise State. Yeah. And I think there's a lot more there. Now, he's not a one or a, you know, if you want to get into these categories, you'd say he's not a one or a, a two. Three, yeah. But he's, I think he can be really good at that. Yeah. You know? Um, and that's a starter. That's someone that's going to be on the field a lot. Yeah. going to get thrown the, you know, yeah, I mean, playing 11 times a year. He's going to be on the field probably 60% of your snaps. So, yep. you know. Unfortunately, they need a one, a one and a two right now. In my, in, well, I don't know what's going to happen with Diggs, but and, and and probably some people might view this as a hot take. To me, it's not from watching tape. But Diggs is not a true one anymore. You need a guy. They need a vertical dimension, and they you know they need a guy that can work the intermediate levels. You know, pretty consistently. Mm -hmm. They need they need more juice at receiver. That's why we were saying, like in our in our ideal world, they draft two. Right. Those three rounds. They should double dip. And then just get a defensive player with the other pick somewhere. Right. That, that makes would, sense. That would yeah. be a Because, you, know, you know, you don't want to waste Josh Allen here without giving him receivers. Yes, exactly. Sure. You know. Greg, thanks as always. Go have fun watching the quarterbacks. Uh, we'll catch up with you somewhere down the line here in the offseason. Appreciate the I appreciate time Appreciate it, always. guys. Thanks yeah. so much. Thanks.